Sports Press Club. Both are correct. Uh, we have the, the pleasure here to uh, present uh, Fiata. Uh, Fiata was the, and welcome also for sure to the, all the speakers here. They will be presented later on. Welcome to all those who follow us on Zoom. Uh, there are some people uh, online. And as you know, as all our press conference press conferences, we broadcast them on the internet on www.pressclub.ch. So um, the FIATA was for, founded in 1926 in Vienna, and um, two years ago, exactly, moved from Zurich to Geneva to get closer to this international organization cluster here, uh, a very special cluster here in Geneva. So starting today, uh, FIATA holds here in Geneva the world's biggest freight forwarding membership meeting. FIATA has uh, something like 40,000 uh, members, so it's the largest uh, organization of this type in, uh, in the world. And for the first time, if I understand, this event is also directed toward uh, the media and so on toward the, the public. As, uh, as you know, today supply chain, the safety of supply chain is a very important topic that's concerning also the general public uh, af with the, after the COVID crisis and also for sure war in Ukraine and different uh, other uh, crises. Um, notably in the in maritime ports so i don't want to um, to to speak longer and i immediately give the floor to stefan graber on my right side stefan graber is the director general of fiata the floor is yours thank you very much uh, mr Ricci. Uh, yeah know. yeah Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone, uh, the one here in the room and the one online. Uh, so, uh, as it was said, FIATA stands for Fédération Internationale des Associations de Transitaires et Assimilés, uh, so International Federation of Freight Forwarders Associations, and uh, is the biggest federation uh, representing the voice of uh, the logistic industry, with uh, composed of 111 national association members who, who are are uh, representing more than 40,000 freight forwarding and logistic firms worldwide. Uh, we also have members in countries where there is no national association yet, uh, and uh, all together we are present in 150 countries. Uh, the role of FIATA is to advocate trade facilitation and actively contributing to uh, the functioning of the supply chain and the logistics uh, through clo close collaboration and by leverages, uh, leverages the knowledge of uh, the relevant stakeholders in the supply chain and the knowledge of our members. So we have a, a certain number of tools we provide to our members. Uh, first of all, it's uh, transport documents and forms, including digital ones. Uh, we have a very ambitious uh, Fiat Digital strategy for the di digitization of our trade documents. Uh, and uh, we might, you might have more questions on that, but uh, we can answer later on. We have two main events, that is the networking part of our activity, uh, the Fiat World Congress and the HQ meetings. So HQ meeting means headquarters. So that as we moved our headquarters from Zurich to Geneva, uh, we have our first headquarters meeting in Geneva uh, since the last two years because of the pandemic, we, we couldn't have one. So we are very, very pleased for this uh, first experience that will certainly not be the last one. So we, we are looking to increase and leverage this event in the coming years. And we are really happy also to welcome all our uh, partner organization uh, with who we work uh, here at the, the CICG. We are also working on publication, uh, news, policy updates uh, uh, on 
logistic uh, aspects, uh, lobbying. We work a lot with uh, also the authorities, uh, with the main uh, regulatory international organization. And effectively, the last point is this engagement with international uh, organization for the benefit of all the members and uh, for ensuring a fluent flow of uh, freight and goods from the manufacturer in China, if uh, you, you, you are all on your laptop, I see. So that's exactly the role of our member, is to ensure that uh, the laptop that is uh, produced somewhere uh, in China is then packed properly, uh, brought by road to the port, charged in a container, then the container on a ship, the ship, goes to Europe, to uh, the port of Hamburg, then from Hamburg uh, is moved to rail uh, until, until Switzerland to the logistic center of, let's say, I will not say any words, so I will not do publicity for anyone, so to a, to a big distributor, uh, uh, distribution center, and then by road to the store where you will uh, buy it. So the role of the freight forwarder is really this, it's to coordinate and to support uh, this supply chain to facilitate, optimize, and offer uh, the best possible uh, logistics uh, for uh, the customers and for the shippers. So we work with, uh, mem uh, with our international organizations like uh, uh, UNCTAD, UNEC, UNSCAP, UNEP, uh, UNCITRAL. Uh, we also have close uh, relationship with the WTO, the World Trade Organization. Uh, we have uh, an observer status at the World Custom Organization. We are part of the private sector consulting group for uh, all the custom issues because when we move, when you move goods across countries, you have borders and the question of customs and documentation across uh, customs is, uh, is very key. Uh, we work also with other uh, organizations uh, active in present in Geneva, look, like IRU, then uh, ITC, ILO, World Bank, and many others. And finally, uh, one of the big activity we have also for our member is training and development uh, of the next generation of freight forwarders. Uh, it's capacity building. We have a FIATA diploma in freight forwarding uh, that exists for many years. It's delivered by our national association, but it's FIATA that sets the standards and uh, regularly uh, validate uh, our association and uh, work with them in reaching and ensuring that uh, they still are up to date and uh, follow the standards. We have a FIATA higher diploma in supply chain management. Uh, we also work on a young logistics uh, professional award. Uh, that's really a program that the organization developed to encourage new the new generation to enter this industry to give visibility to uh, young freight forwarders. And finally, educational webinar series uh, that we do uh, for keeping our members up to date with the late, latest uh, uh, practice in the industry. So I will not stop here for uh, the description of uh, our uh, in this, our, our organization, federation, FIATA, and I'm very happy to introduce you uh, the president of FIATA, Dr. Ivan Petrov. Uh, we also have uh, with him, they will be here if you, to, to support for the question, uh, the immediate past president, Mr. Basil Peterson, and uh, our secretary general, uh, Mr. Uh, Robert Keane. And uh, we have here on the side uh, all our senior vice president that are also attending this press conference and our treasurer uh, that are here. So you have here, in fact, our whole presidency, as, I, as you can see, but the president will We'll probably uh, say a few words as that, a very international presidency, because I'm the only Swiss. Uh, all the others are from all the parts of the world. Which is true, and it's uh, normal for the global organization, as FIAT is. And first of all, thank you so much uh, to the media representatives for the attention, for being with us today. A few of uh, you are well known, a few probably not so much because of the French-speaking area. 
Uh, but we hope we shall be very well known for the future as far as uh, we are settled very firmly here to this uh, place in Geneva. For your convenience, we prepared very short press release, bullet point uh, material uh, in order to be used uh, for your materials when you prepare. So we start of uh, what are the main priorities which we have uh, as per today there to develop a more or less concept of multimodality and in uninterrupted supply chain. We have digitalization processes as a backup to the uh, physical flow. We have addressing economy impacts on supply chain and facilitating trade and capacity building. We have vocational training and we have sustainability matters. Multimodal threat for workers is a key wording. We are independent with all modes of transport, and that makes us neutral and developing uh, the supply chain on, from the point of view of cargo, not the point of view of vehicle, which makes us really stronger in this ca capacity building of supply chain and also, very importantly, more sustainable. We are not just coming uh, from this vehicle perspective and more uh, than just carriers, we can add value on the product because we are concentrated on this adding value process mostly, not on the carriage as it is since it's uh, fulfilled in majority of the cases by other carriers. And through there, many organizations representing uh, we represent as this multimodalism, this mo all mode of transport at once. So we arrange documents, procedures. Last my first mile deliveries, warehousing, stock controls, quant quality, customs. All this was uh, set in front. We are digital freight forwarders, and it was especially uh, important for this COVID-19 period where it was a huge necessity to increase our potential in uh, digitalization. Uh, we already set an online platform, a platform uh, a payment platform for the FIAT members named FreightPay. It's based on a big database of our customers, of our members, and the top of uh, ranking in this system is the UNC fax standard for bill of lading, which is already settled. And this is also the base for electronic multimodal negotiable fiat bill of lading, which will be very important tool for overcoming a lot of problems of the supply chain. And press re release on this topic will be, uh, will be given you tomorrow as our communication manager says. Addressing economic impacts on supply chain, we are here to listen to problems from our members, to increase potential trade facilitation, capacity building, and economic recovery after the pandemic, helping the freight forwarders to address their recovery processes. Of course, uh, uh, also the war in Ukraine made an impact on logistics a lot. It's not only human aspect, uh, political aspect, which uh, we just can share, but we cannot uh, make a lot. But uh, as far as the supply chain is concerned, we have a serious change in the flows or the ambitions that the flows will be ch challenged. And new corridors are very uh, fast call uh, to avoid Russia a lot of uh, big carriers also stopped calling Russia. So uh, there are alternatives, especially for Ukraine, who, uh, should have been found since uh, Ukraine at the moment is a landlocked country, no access from the sea. So there are a lot of challenges to use uh, between Asia and Europe and also in the southeastern European scene. We have also one of the most important topics at the moment is vertical integration of the ocean freight carriers and huge maritime crisis increasing a lot uh, the freight and not only the freight but uh, the service level of uh, uh, delivery it's drastically uh, low 
just the opposite of the freight paid for that. We have also, for the, on these purposes, we have uh, seminars that are uh, levied on already two, and on Friday there will be a very important seminar on this topic led by our senior vice president on maritime crisis with regulatory uh, agencies on top level from the state, United States of America, European Commission, uh, China, and African Union. Then we have also a lot of uh, vocational training matters. Vocational training for fiat is a trademark. We have uh, uh, developed the standards for vocational training, which are well known and worldwide accepted, including within the European Commission, which uh, for this uh, in European uh, standards, they are not developed, so they accept fiat standard as a European standard. We have also a lot of sustainability matters uh, related to greening economy, decarbonization, which is of big importance also to your Geneva place. Uh, we understood very well from the meeting held uh, yesterday with the Minister of Economy in this uh, canton. So thank you again. That's our expose. No. So thank you very much for this uh, for this presentation. So now we we open uh, the session to questions. Yes, sir. Please give your name and organization, please. And and switch on the button in front of you. I take this one. Yeah. Okay. Um, Chris Turpkin, can you? I hope you can hear me. Yes. Yes, I'm the editor-in-chief of the International Transport Journal, so I'll make it uh, very thorough. Uh, I was interested, of course, in, in, the, in one of the major topics. I mean, there are many at the moment, but the vertical integration. At the moment, uh, it is a policy of some carriers, although not of all of them, to push the freight forwarders partially out of the supply chain. And that's, of course, is a serious threat. And due to the fact that uh, the carriers at this very moment, for 10 years they have not, but now they have quite a, number, a lot of power, uh, it is a major, uh, I think, a major uh, part of your activity, of course, to, to make people notice that uh, there is a tremendous change inside of the supply chain going on. So uh, my question is, how much, uh, well, how far do you go as far as aligning with other partners to, to make this policy clear and felt uh, is done? And on the other hand, uh, how much do you involve governments and also uh, organ international organizations which, are, um, which can be, well, can have an influence on this? I would uh, start first, and then I would uh, probably go to uh, Jens Römer, our senior vice president, who is uh, responsible for this part of topics. We think that uh, vertical integration goes not just uh, by uh, very few, but uh, by majority at the moment of the big carriers, at least on the big uh, 10 carriers, which are having a dominant position on the market, uh, somewhat like 80 percent or beyond. Uh, so this is uh, really drastic uh, violence on the uh, competitive edge on the market. And uh, the situation was uh, uh, misused uh, in a way like uh, COVID-19 measures uh, and being uh, supported by the uh, governments or <coughs> mostly European Commission in this sense. Uh, however, uh, this uh, situation from the past was probably adequate, but in the meantime, it's uh, a bit uh, very serious violence. And uh, if we see uh, also the incomes officially uh, given as uh, like figures of these uh, uh, biggest carriers, they have a drastic increase in their profit share, while the there is at the same time drastic decrease in service level and also they enter into niche markets which were absolutely before the part of the freight forwarding industry of the logistics industry as last mile uh, solutions and 
since they are not concentrating anymore on port-to-port -port services, but also on last mile solutions, which they may be interested, but they do it on purpose uh, to convince people to go through their platform and to buy until the end. If uh, not buying until the end, you cannot have a merchant haulage very easily accessible, or you cannot obtain container for this transport. So there are a lot of uh, different tools uh, misused uh, in uh, this vertical integration, which, as a matter of fact, was part of the increasing the capacity of the vessels, which is saving at the first glance that you will save cost if you have uh, bigger vessels. But these bigger vessels also influence at the end some a lot of stow shortages in uh, capacity in the ports. Also, you know about Suez Canal was also stopped for a while. So at the end of the day, uh, this uh, parallel process uh, came as a negative impact on the industry. If you, uh, Jens, want to say something, please. Oops, never mind. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Jens Römer. Uh, I think very good, uh, interesting question uh, and obviously very relevant. Uh, as uh, our president uh, and uh, Stefan Graber mentioned before, our main interest is the supply chain. And an improved supply, cha supply chain is, is, is very high on our agenda, so every competition is, is good, because competition makes us better. The problem is, or the point is, that the competition should be on the same level playing field. And unfortunately, for various reasons, this is not the case as, uh, as far as the competition the in the, the vertical integration of the shipping lines are concerned. Um, shipping lines are protected uh, and uh, through alliances. Uh, in Europe, it's the European Block Exemption Agreement. Uh, there are today uh, 10 shipping lines controlling 90% about that. Uh, of uh, the main world trade, so it's an oligopoly. Um, they have tax advantages. They have tax advantages, and the money they earn currently on the maritime services are based on, on these, uh, are, are subject to these taxes they pay. But they use the funds in order to invest in the supply chain, competing with us who don't have these tax advantages. So this is a major question from, from our side. Um, there's another angle. Um, as I mentioned, uh, there's a, quite a concentration. And uh, as we all know, Google lost a major case in Europe, uh, uh, giving preference to, to their own uh, shopping services. And here again, we wonder um, if such a strong dominant, dominating uh, uh, industry like the shipping line services support their own services like customs brokerage, uh, carrier haulage by going into the supply chain, maybe carrier haulage just as an example. There are platforms and an in, in investigation uh, uh, request from our members uh, uh, concluded basically that if you try to book a container from port to port, the original service of the maritime service of a shipping line, you may not get uh, the space or the container. If you do the, sh the same port-to-port -port connection, but add a custom service or maybe a, a, a trucking service, a carrier solage, then you may get the booking. So our uh, conclusion is clearly that shipping lines uh, uh, support their own services. I think that to the same, uh, the first question, uh, uh, Mr. Durbkin. Um, but the, the other one was, our uh, question was, are we aligning or with whom are we aligning? Yes. If and when there are partners, uh, other stakeholders, we do align. Uh, maybe, but I mean, we are global, so uh, you have to look at every country, every region separately. Some regions are well organized. Uh, uh, for example, of course, in Europe and in the European context, our partner, uh, our uh, uh, colleagues from Klekat, they do obviously uh, uh, align with uh, other stakeholders uh, like shippers, maybe terminal operators. Uh, I hope that answers your question. 
Yeah, just just a, a final uh, add-on. Uh, as far as the United States are concerned, I think uh, the Federal Maritime Commission was one of the first really now to want to have a closer look at that because in Europe so far we haven't had that much of, much of an action and we had to our to our uh, well disappointment uh, over the last years an extension of the block exemption. So what is the news that you're getting from the U.S. side on this? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, uh, there, there appears to be a big difference in terms of the approach from, from the FMC as well as uh, 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 the European uh, Commission. Um, I think the United Nations established that uh, the, the obviously we have global inflation for various reasons, but one of the reasons apparently 1.5% as it was established in a study by the United Nations, 1.5% uh, is due to the increased freight rates. And that appears to have a very sensitive nerve in, 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 in the USA. Um, so, but, but the USA has been a lot more proactive in the past. I mean, uh, the, the problem is not competition, not services. I mean, like, for example, demerit and detention, a very important tool. It should increase the fluidity of containers, but not increase profits of shipping lines. So the, the, the uh, Federal Maritime Commission, the FMC in the USA, and the leadership of Rebecca ba Dai, whom we, by the way, will have uh, in a meeting on, on this Friday, this coming Friday, um, and they investigated for years for years, uh, demerit and detention practices, and they and I mean, they really have. They had workshops. They they had invited all stakeholders, and the whole process took, I think, about six years. And they established that uh, de de uh, detention and demerit practices of shipping lines are unfair to some degree. They con uh, they published a final rule, and I indeed also wonder because th these practices are global. So if, if one country seriously investigated, comes to a conclusion, it should indeed be a global conclusion and, and it should, in my opinion, also be adopted in Europe. So yes, the European Commission appears to be uh, uh, having a different approach and uh, is, is, uh, is less uh, maybe proactive, uh, I don't know, but uh, the, the block exemption is on the table in about two years' time. And uh, we are confident that uh, this time around uh, the conclusion will be different. To, to give you a few elements uh, for your qu first question, the collaboration with other organizations. So uh, the president, Dr. Petrov, participated in, a, uh, in the WTO high-level dialogue on trade facilitation uh, with uh, the Director General of WTO uh, in March. We have also had uh, multiple participation in discussion with UNCTAD on uh, market structure and the impact uh, of this situation on developing countries because uh, the situation we observe are impacting more uh, developing countries. And uh, also we have, as it was mentioned, uh, the, the meeting that is planned on Friday where uh, we'll participate, uh, Rebecca Dai from the FMC, where we'll participate uh, the DGCOM transport uh, from the Euro Director General from the European uh, Commission. We will have also a representative, high-level representative of the Chinese uh, authorities and finally a, re a high representative of uh, the African Union. So that will be on Friday. So that is part of the collaborations FIATA is putting in place to address this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other questions in the room? Yes, please. Your name and Yes, function. Boris Engelson, a journalist freelance. I shouldn't be allowed to put a question since I arrived five minutes back. There are so many meetings today in Geneva. Precisely, my first question is on that. Today starts another meeting on grain market. Is it accidental that it takes place in Geneva the same week, or do you have any connection with these professional actors of the grain market where they also address the issue of di disruption of the grain market due to the geopolitical situation. My second question is, is this the only uh, session which is open to the media or will there be till the end of your 
meeting, uh, other sessions open to the media, and then I have an information for you. Okay. So, uh, uh, yes, it's, it's accidental that uh, this meeting is happening at the same time of ours. As you said, there are a lot of meetings in Geneva. Now, uh, the choice of Geneva is not uh, by accident. The fact that FIATA moves its headquarters to Geneva is linked to the uh, environment we have in Geneva. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning the collaboration with the international organization based here. But it's clear that you have a full ecosystem of international actors that are involved in uh, in trading, in shipping, in uh, in transport, in logistics, and uh, that is gravitating around uh, the international organization that uh, is perfectly relevant for the presence of FIATA and its headquarters here in Geneva and for the visibility of the organization in its action and its collaboration with other actors. And for your second question, it's a, uh, I think probably our communication manager could, she's not listening, <laughs> could maybe answer because I, I'm not so sure of the protocol. So the, the media where uh, can attend all the meetings? Yes, yeah, so we have um, allowed an online link to be shared to um, signed up members. The media from our side, I think that would be fine. Okay. To have media presence there, maybe with a registration online uh, beforehand. I did not get it. It will be uh, attending online only or registering online and then attending on, yes, so on site? Yes, you can register online to, to attend either in person or uh, online. Yeah. We will send a link Thank to you. you. I will come to you personally at the end for that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, there is one question on Zoom online, I guess. Hi, I'm uh, Noelle Marie Fletcher. I'm a journalist in DC, and I'm going to be writing about this for Transport Topics, which is a newspaper of the American Trucking Associations. So I'm interested in uh, the vertical inter integration problem. How is it impacting the US? Is it uh, impacting it in terms of costs or, or time? And is it impacting it the same or, or some areas more so than others? I'll just start and then we shift to my colleagues. I think this problem is global. It affects all areas in the world. In terms of how much America, United States of America, is more or less concerned, Jens, would you share some more information on this? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really very relevant and good question. Um, I think the, the main problem is choice and, and, and competition. Um, I mean, we have seen that uh, uh, there are 10 shipping lines organized in, in basically three major global alliances, um, basically controlling uh, world trade, world container trade. And the question is, uh, what, what has it done to the business? Where, where are we today? And uh, do we want to limit the choice of having these shipping lines controlling uh, the door-to-door -door movement? Uh, because right now, a lot of containers, uh, uh, particularly containers, are moved in merchant holds organized uh, by, by freight forwarders, like our president mentions. We offer value-added services along the supply chain. And we do that traditionally. And we have trained people. Because you have to be trained. I mean, we, we, in the beginning, we talked about safety and security. Hazardous cargo, we have seen what happened in Beirut, what, happened in, what can happen in, in Tianjin. A lot of containers seem to be, a lot of fires seem to be breaking out on, on, in, in, the, in the supply chain on sea. So safety is, 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 is important. So you, you want to have a, a specialists doing the, these door-to-door -door services, and and that and we we are specialists, so it's a matter of choice and and competition, and uh, if if carriers are integrating themselves and uh, 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 giving unfair advantage to carriers' haulage, merchant haulage, haulage services are as a disadvantage, so your choice is going to be less. Thank you. Is there another question on Zoom or in the room? On Zoom, are there other questions? No? 
Other questions in the room? Yes, sir. Yes, um, I would very much like to go back to the question of digitization because decarbonization and digitization are maybe the, big, the two big Ds at the moment we are dealing with. But um, I think especially digitization is, a, is something which is also individual to Fiat and which, as we are talking about the role model of uh, freight forwarding in the supply chain, I think is also a tool to, to push the position of the freight forwarders forward. So um, can you explain a little bit about the policy you're driving at? You were, you were talking about freight pay and other measures, also the bill of lading that you are transforming into a digital tool. And you have also gotten recognition for that. If you can give me more details, I'd be delighted. Thank you. I'll, I'll start and I'll also pass the word then to Director General or also to Lucelli if uh, she wants to say uh, something. Since they're responsible for developing of a digital strategy, it's uh, a strategy that uh, our last presidency before this uh, took a decision to promote and uh, it was more than two years ago, so it's uh, really developed very fast and very uh, well during this period. It consists of six specific zones, which three of them you just mentioned. We should start with a big database, which is uh, actually the base consistent of uh, information about uh, the customers, about the membership. It makes the process uh, very transparent and it makes the pro process very safe because uh, throughout this supply chain uh, networking and uh, issuing of documents and the blockchain activities, you need to have uh, real data and real documents that should be verified. We also shifted the process uh, from a decentralized to centralized one from a national association into the HQ in Geneva. So this uh, process will be uniquely controlled and uh, pushed uh, from Geneva with cooperation of the National Association, wh who, which will, will benefit, of course, like uh, until now with this process. And when freight pay is an instrument which I'll ask Turgut to explain a bit more with the specialist, as far as uh, Fiat the Bill of Lading is concerned, it's uh, the most important document which Fiat uh, dispose of. This is uh, a, especially for the time uh, when there was such a necessity, not only on C Bill of Lading, but also on multimodal Bill of Lading, as Fiat is the multimodal organization globally. And uh, you can use uh, this uh, multimodal document from door to door, issued by the transport multimodal operator, which in this case can be a freight forwarder itself, having issued this first level document and on the second level mm -hmm. to carry with the different carriers, either sea or railway operators, no matter what, on the and plus last mile on CMRs. So this is uh, how it works. Also, this document is uh, very well accepted by ICC in Paris. So it's part of the letter of credit conditions and especially interesting for the Chinese banking system, allowing and uh, fostering their trade since this is a very important issue. So we put this uh, understanding on a different uh, level with the uh, United Nations, with UNICETRAL, UNECE, so we are working and we are very close to the technical solution, which probably will come back, but for, about freight pay, Turgut. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. If I may, I'm just going to touch upon a bit in more detail to our digital strategy. Uh, Christian, you know that we are in a, we are working in a very complicated environment. Uh, so if you look at the uh, flow of the goods from the origin till the destination, it, it, when it is especially cross-border operations, there are lots of steps that we follow. And this is starting from receiving commercial invoice, packing list, certificate of origin from the client, and then making declarations to the port authorities, customs authorities, and 
preparing shipping documents and then transferring them to the destination there again making applications or uh, registrations of the goods to the customs and then customs procedures deliveries and i mean uh, the uh, uh, the the control of the stocks inventory everything is related to paper and during the pandemic particularly we have realized that we cannot always access to those authorities to interact with them but we have to be able to transfer this data in a digital environment and this data particularly is just uh, duplicating itself in every uh, step the data is actually one but this data is given to different um, players in the ecosystem if you like it is the same description of of goods it is the same customs code it is the same value it is the same quantity so but for different stage we are just uh, entering this data again and again and again so it should be possible for the entire environment to make one entry and then to use that entry throughout the uh, logistics chain if you like so therefore digitalization is very important from various aspects one of them is being uh, green friendly that during this processes we are using maybe lots of uh, paper ink and everything so with digital environment we just get rid of those it is first of all environmentally friendly and then the second thing is that we control the data uh, we control the safety of the data and we protect the uh, ownership of the data which is actually very important for the freight forwarders and logistics service providers so within this context we have different areas as i have mentioned that uh, first of all we have to digitize our daily processes within our members and then we have to digitize our processes with the authorities governmental authorities mainly that we are interacting and then uh, there are digital forwarding platforms so this is another aspect of the digitalization um, and together with this uh, as mr president has mentioned that we have first of all digitized our uh, important transport document fiat and multimodal transport bill of lading and then we have created a worldwide standard if you like that every stakeholder can use it so we so we brought standardization to the industry so with this opportunity i would like to encourage all uh, tms providers to use the same standards so that we bring integrity into the uh, community and together with this while discussing what sort of digital uh, solutions or products we can introduce we thought that the one of the most important element of our business is uh, payment within our countries or overseas and most every time uh, small payments between the freight forwarders are being sort of a problem that the banking charges are too high that the uh, effectively uh, doing the payment would be very costly and even would just uh, throw away the profit that they have met, made in that uh, particular transaction so we have partner with a company who is providing us the uh, necessary infrastructure and our fiat members are able to transfer monies in between their accounts in a very minimum cost which is ena enabling them to even transfer 50 dollars at a cost of few dollars if you like so this is a very important tool uh, that FIATA is offering to its member as a value-added service. Thank you. Thank you, Togo. Just to, to add on one thing. Uh, so is blockchain in the end the vision? Because you were going all along the supply chain in the end involving the payment. So is that the vision? Indeed, blockchain is an integral part of all digitalization processes for the safety and security of the flows as well as data and protection of the ownership of the goods, if you like, because with the bill of lading, we first of all uh, represent the title of the goods and title of the representing title of the goods is a very important element that uh, true blockchain systems when the bill of lading is changing hands or changing the title, it should be kind of locked, secured and blockchain platforms are good for this uh, important issue. Thank you. Is there any other question? Question on Zoom, no questions. If one more question.
No, I had promised an information, so I'll try to be very quick. Uh, you know better than I do that for the public at large, shipping has a bad name. It probably goes back to the time of uh, piracy. Piracy, don't know who. But funnily enough, there is a Swiss film, an uh, award winning film, which depicts the world, it's a feature film, it's not a documentary, which depicts the world of shipping and freight uh, in a rather positive way, or at least and a very interesting light, and it could even be used as a support for public debates because your industry is uh, crucial and little known. The film, the title is telling ceux qui travaillent, or les gens qui travaillent, people who work. So I just inform you that this film, probably the uh, director would be very happy to to okay. uh, uh, lend you his film for this kind of debate. And another uh, uh, information, but And this is your more. press conference, Mr. Uh, no, Anderson, if I understand. <laughs> Probably most of you in the room know that WTO also has a very bad name, but still at the end of each summer, they have that fabulous public forum, which is the most transparent and dynamic event in the Geneva, uh, let's say, international uh, Geneva. So even for professional, it is open to the public, but even for professional, I think it's one of the must of the Geneva calendar. Thank you very much. So now I guess if there is any remarks here, yes? Yeah, so just as we come to the end of this press conference, I'd like to announce that we'll be um, releasing a press release tomorrow on the paperless uh, Fiesta Bill of Lading, uh, which would be to the interest of the media, for those online and those in person, and as well on Friday in relation to the Maritime Webinar Series, just as Senior Vice President Jens Romer has mentioned. Um, so if you would like to access those, um, we will be in collaboration with the Swiss Press Club on releasing those to the journalists who are invited today online and in person. And um, if you would like to get in touch with FIATA for um, further collaboration on communication as well, you can contact communications at fiata.org. Thank you very much. So I guess uh, we can wrap it up here. Thank you very much to you for your presentations, for your answers to the questions, and I wish you all a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.